coming up is Kelly Dirk, children of Vietnam veterans. Um, she has a very, where's Kelly? There she is. Come on up, Kelly. <laughs> she is going to talk to us about U.S. Agent Orange had her very, her personal experience with it. Uh, her foundation who is helping the children, uh, victims of uh, Agent Orange of the war, the Vietnam veterans of the Vietnam War. Thanks, Maria. Thank you all for being here. My name is Kelly Derrick. Do you like my vest? I'm not a New Yorker, so I thought bright orange would help me not get lost in the crowd. Okay, really, it's to represent Agent Orange. Any Vietnam vets here? Any children of Vietnam vets? Do you know Vietnam vets? Let me hear it. Do you know Vietnam vets? Yes! Are they sick? Yes. Do they have health problems? Definitely! Do you know their children? Yes. Are their children sick? Anybody? Yes. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Monsanto and their involvement from and with Agent Orange. This is from their website. If you go to Monsanto.com, you will find, if you type in Agent Orange, their little press release hidden away with their excuse. The U.S. military used Agent Orange in Vietnam from 1961 to 1971. This was used to clear the jungles. The excuse was make it so that we could see our enemy. Monsanto themselves manufactured Agent Orange from 1965 to 1969. During that time, they were the largest producer of Agent Orange. Agent Orange is a mix of two chemical compounds. When those two chemical compounds are formed, it becomes dioxin. This quote from Monsanto, directly. We believe that the adverse consequences alleged to have arisen out of the Vietnam War, including the use of Agent Orange, should be resolved by the governments that were involved. Not them. During the time that Monsanto was producing Agent Orange, their concentrations of dioxin were 1,000 times the levels of the other six chemical companies that were producing Agent Orange as contractors for the U.S. government. I get stuck a lot when I have to introduce myself because I'm so many different things. We represent the children of Vietnam vets. I want to tell you some things that I've heard and that other vets have shared with us. The Vietnam vets in country, boots on the ground, Southeast Asia, did not know what Agent Orange was. The weather was hot. They were in a jungle. They had 55 gallon drums of a clear liquid only marked with an orange stripe around it. They had water fights with it. When these drums were emptied after spraying, our military sometimes used the drums as barbecue pits. In other words, 55 gallon drums filled with Agent Orange dispersed and then used as a barbecue pit for their food. These drums that were emptied, they used them to store their personal things. They went to the waters that were sprayed with Agent Orange, washed their clothes, and bathed their bodies.
Dioxin, better known as TCDD, is the main chemical compound of Agent Orange. Its toxicity is second only to radioactive waste. Do you hear me, guys? Yeah. Radioactive waste. Nearly 20 million gallons were sprayed over Vietnam. I'm going to give you an idea of what 20 million gallons of clear liquid looks like. A good sized bathtub. You may have them in your apartments, you may have them in your homes. They generally hold 50 gallons of water. <coughs> One million gallons would be 20,000 bathtubs. Therefore, 20 million gallons of Agent Orange is the equivalent to 400,000 bathtubs. The Congressional Record of the United States in 1969 on their report of chemical and biological weapons, 1969 guys, states that one serious restriction on its use is the possibility that heavy concentrations will cause arsenic poisoning in humans. Agent Orange that was used in Vietnam is composed of 54.29% arsenic. You guys know what arsenic is, right? Poison, rat poison. In December of 2006, Department of Defense reported Agent Orange being used for testing and storage. It is confirmed that not just throughout the United States, 32 confirmed locations. Some states had more than one test site. Outside of Vietnam and the United States, Canada, Thailand, Puerto Rico, Korea, and the Pacific Ocean. How many of you guys are from New York? Let me hear it. How many of you guys are from New York? Let me bring this home for you. New York's Fort Drum. It's a testing site 30 miles from Canada. Developmental testing of Agent Orange started in 1959. Reports show that it continued through 1978. That's 19 years of testing. July 26, 2011, State Superior Court Judge of New Jersey for the Passaic River. Diamond Chemical Company operated pesticide and herbicide in the production of Agent Orange. From 1951 to 1969, their Agent Orange toxic waste was dumped into the Passaic River. That's 18 years of pollution in the Passaic River. The company that bought out Diamond is now responsible for cleaning up the Passaic River. Love Canal, Niagara Falls, New York. 21,000 tons of toxic chemicals were buried in the area, including Agent Orange. The, the scandal broke in 1978, and the US government designated 
the Love Canal as an environmental disaster zone. Greenwich, Connecticut, three weeks ago, music, instructional space, and auditorium project. Misa opens Pandora's box. They decided they wanted to redo their high school. They started digging. They found dioxin. So far, they have found levels of dioxin going 15 feet below the surface. This is now. Franklin, New Jersey, October 3rd, 2011. Grassland preserves that are being overrun with a pesky Canadian weed are bothering the people there. So they decided that they wanted to use pesticides that contain the chemical compounds of Agent Orange because the pesticides that they were using previously weren't working. The decision was put on hold for two weeks so that advocates could try and stop the spraying. Four days ago, spraying was approved. Now this is really gonna hit home for you guys right now. Dioxin, the chemical compound of Agent Orange. Again, what I said, second in toxicity only to radioactive waste when burned turns into carcinogenics cancer causing agents they are found in plastics they are found in vinyls they are found in paper products they are found in tampons they are found in bleached coffee filters how many of you guys had coffee this morning how many of you guys used a white filter when those towers in New York City burned after the attacks for three months, what do you think was being released into this environment? Dioxin. I have a quote here from an OSHA employee that I had to dig up. Quote, just received a sample taken at the WTC, parenthesis, in or near plume, I believe, close parenthesis. The result was very high. EPA is saying it is one of the highest levels they have ever seen. It was around 1,000 times higher than normal dioxin levels. And then there's me. I am the legacy of Agent Orange. I am Monsanto's collateral damage. My whole life, I've been suffering from health problems. I have more than 20 diagnosed diseases and illnesses confirmed by a superb team of doctors that took me years to work with. I have Addison's disease, an endocrine disruptor, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, an endocrine disruptor, Crohn's disease. Any of you know what Crohn's disease is? Yes. I am in physical therapy right now, not recovering from a surgery, but preparing for yet another surgery. My pelvic floor has collapsed. I am 36 years old. I do not have children. I've never been pregnant. I can't get pregnant. My organs have dropped below my tailbone. To give you an example of where my organs should be, up here by my belly button. They are sitting down here. I saw them on a video screen in my surgeon's office.
my list of illnesses go on and on and on. For years, I looked for children of Vietnam vets. I would Google anything I possibly could, thinking that it's not just me, there has to be other people out there. For years, I was told by doctors, it's in your head. My childhood was spent in hospital rooms and lab testing. No one believed me. We have no money. We have no donations. We don't get paychecks. We do it on our own time, and we pay for everything out of our own pockets. The legacy has grown. We have support communities, MySpace pages, websites, Facebook pages. We not only advocate for the children of Vietnam vets, we advocate for the Vietnam vets themselves. Currently, 14 diseases are being recognized by the U.S. government as presumptive illnesses from the exposure of Agent Orange to our soldiers in Vietnam. There is only one illness being recognized by our government for the children of Vietnam veterans. It is spina bifida. About a year and a half ago, we compiled our databases and our members' information, and we found 176 illnesses reported by children of Vietnam veterans not being recognized. We call ourselves COVVs. It gets tiring saying children in Vietnam veterans and I get dry mouth because of all the medication I'm on. We don't look sick. I hear it all the time. And it's the most annoying thing on the face of the earth. I have a handicap placard for my car. I try not to use it because people stare at me wondering why I'm parking in a handicapped spot. Well, That started in 1998. My adopted parents were crossing over the Tacony Palmyra Bridge from Jersey back into Philadelphia. I had a Crohn's attack. The bridge went up. I had to walk across all lanes of bridge traffic into the police station to use the bathroom. From that point on, I never go anywhere without that handicap placard in my car. 10 years since then, the ability to walk, travel, breathe, is a chore for me every day. Over time, we found out that it's not just the children of the Vietnam vets that were exposed to Agent Orange. It's the families of our military that are living on U.S. military bases who were testing Agent Orange. They're sick. They're dying. Those veterans are dying. Widespread awareness of GMOs and the criminal acts of Monsanto have created a new legacy for us. It's a legacy that stands for people willing to fight for you. You don't have to be the, children of a Viet the child of a Vietnam vet. You can still stand up and fight. You have to fight against Monsanto. They are poisoning your food every single day. It was very important to unite with millions against Monsanto and Organic Consumers Network. 
The more of us that unite together, the taller we stand, the harder they fall. Vietnam-era veterans, currently, there are 1 million, 51,294 on disability benefits. Children of Vietnam veterans on disability benefits, 8,300. 46. The Vietnam War occurred from 1964 to 1975. Total U.S. service members worldwide, 8,744,000. I wanted you guys to understand what kind of number that is, so I looked up the population of the city of New York, 8,175,133. In other words, the U.S. government sent the amount of people living in this city to fight in the Vietnam War. 3,000,000 and 3,000 were deployed to Southeast Asia. We say boots on the ground, in country. Battle deaths, 47,434. Other deaths in theater, 10,786. Those are the numbers and the names that you find on the Vietnam Wall some 58,000 of our Americans. Currently, in the United States, there are 7,569,000 Vietnam veterans. Again, I want you to think about the number of people living in New York City. 8,175,133. If only half of those Vietnam veterans fathered one child, that would mean 3,784,500. But I'm going to break it down again because the government doesn't even want to recognize all but a couple hundred of us. One quarter of that number of children would be 1,892,250. If only half of those children are sick in the United States from exposure to Agent Orange passed from their parents' service in Vietnam, that would equal 946,125. I think I've broken the figures down enough to say there are people that are sick and dying because of our government and because of Monsanto. They are people just like me. They are my age. Sometimes I say I'm one of the lucky ones. I not only have private insurance, I have Medicare. I fought long and hard, like I said, to get the team of doctors that I needed. But sometimes I consider myself one of the unlucky ones. Because of all those children of Vietnam vets out there, many still have fathers. If their fathers are dead, 
they at least got to see parts of them growing up. My father, Harry C. Mackle Jr., died at the age of 37. I was seven years old. I was in second grade. I spent the last two years of his life visiting him in a hospital room. Paralyzed from the neck down, his body ridden with cancer. He did two tours in country, boots on the ground, Vietnam. He was a loadmaster sergeant for the United States Air Force. When he wasn't loading, he had the tanks that exterminators carry on their backs on his, spraying the jungles for Viet Cong, the enemy. My father went home to be a Philadelphia stakeout officer with the police department. He's considered a hero. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the 1978 MOVE epidemic that happened in Philadelphia. My father was there. My father was shot. My father refused to be taken off the front line. In my father's obituary, his partner and my godfather, who is now dead, stated, Harry thought he had a bomb ticking in him, Agent Orange. My father knew this long before he died. We want the government to recognize that we're sick. We want the government to stand up and pass the necessary legislation to say we deserve the benefits to help care for us medically. As I said before, Monsanto is not willing to do it. They blame the U.S. government. I want to ask you guys a question. Monsanto executives, do you think they eat GM food? No. Let me ask you guys a question. Monsanto executives, do you think they eat GM food? No. Do you think they feed their children GM foods? The chemical compound of Agent Orange is still being used, as I said earlier, in pesticides, plastics, solvents, detergents, cosmetics, bleached paper products, tampons, white coffee filters. With each use, you're putting it in your body. Each use. You are putting part of the chemical compound of Agent Orange into your bodies. I'm here today to give you guys a warning. If we don't take action now, then what are you going to leave the future generations? Compromised immune systems, learning disabilities, multiple autoimmune and rare diseases, cancers, mental health issues, being ignored by their government, uneducated doctors. They will suffer from infertility. They will face premature death due to misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed autoimmune diseases that result in organ failure and rare cancers. When all of these products that we're using are incinerated for waste, 
They're releasing more dioxin into the environment. You're breathing it in. We're here today to tell you that Monsanto, who claims to be an agricultural company, no, they are a chemical company, are injecting their genetically modified seeds with pesticides, the same pesticides that make up the chemical compound of Agent Orange. I will repeat myself to as many people as I need to for as long as I can. We know the dangers of pesticides when they're merely, merely sprayed on our crops. What happens? Maybe you bring it home and wash it? Maybe you're lazy and you don't? The thing is, these pesticides, when it rains, get into our water system, they get into our soils, they get into our air. Two days ago, Friday, October 14th, 2011, was the 29th anniversary of my father's death. That grief hurts more than any illness Agent Orange can inflict upon my body. I went to school for psychology. I hold a master's degree social psychology, secondary education, and history. I had to retire from my field 11 years ago because of my illnesses. I never thought I would be doing this, standing here in front of you guys, doing radio interviews, getting phone calls for newspaper interviews, and being the voice for the people who are too sick to speak. I just want to share with you a quote by E.M. Foster. We must be willing to let go of the life we had planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. For having me here today and organizing this event. I want to thank Millions Against Monsanto and organic consumers for working so hard what an end to being a country that is poisoned. I want to say welcome home to all of our Vietnam veterans. They never got a proper welcome home. I want to thank all of our military for their service. Active, non-active, every single place they've been. I want to thank every child of a Vietnam vet out there and our supporters. You make it possible for us to do this every day. I want to thank Paul Mason with Red Zone Graphic Embroidery. He did this best for me. He donated the entire cost. I don't leave the house but for doctor's appointments. I live 45 minutes north of Center City, Philadelphia. This was a trip and it was well worth it. Thank you everyone for being here and listening.